Welcome to the Click & Co podcast for the 17th of February. Um, a quick look at some of the events that uh, we're expecting for the week ahead, um, particularly on the macro front. Um, on Later this week, we're expecting to take readings in China on the PMI data, the forward-looking survey data, um, at the HSBC study, the independent study. Um, is going to be closely watched for signs of any slowing or slowing below trend of the Chinese economy. Um, overnight, we um, did receive the data from Japan on the Q4 GDP numbers. Uh, now, these numbers were um, much lower than anticipated. The annualised growth, 2.8% was forecast, and it was coming in nearer 1%. Um, really, the reasons for the slowdown in the fourth quarter are put really at the slowing emerging markets and what that's doing for Japan's export business. So, to some extent, um, the market took this number largely in its stride. Uh, the key so Japanese yen rate against the dollar still trading around that 102 level. In the UK here this week, and we'll talk a little bit later about the strengthening sterling. Uh, Mark Carney was on uh, the Andrew Ma show yesterday, and uh, this week he will be talking um, with about employment numbers, and we'll also have the reading on inflation. Uh, that inflation number hit target last month of 2%, 1.9% is the anticipated number for last month. And in Europe, um, well, it's the PMI. Um, again, uh, like China, these are the forward-looking surveys. Um, re recent GDP data from Europe, in fairness, has been slightly better than expected. And as a result of that, the lack of uh, new initiatives from the ECB, again, has been largely sort of absorbed by markets. PMI data, good for confidence surveys um, throughout. And uh, it's just interesting to note that some of the paper, the 10-year paper, throughout some of the periphery economies and the southern hemisphere economies in Europe have really been uh, sort of hitting new lows. So encouraging signs that the crisis feels further away in Europe. So let's just take a look at some of the corporate data we can expect for this week. Um, fair to say that we are starting to come towards the tail end of the reporting season, so less impact from the corporates. But um, for the UK, um, companies that we're commenting upon, intercontinental hotels, due to publish their full year numbers out. Um, this is one of our stocks for 2014 and one, one which we um, expect to see further. Quite strong growth here in central, central London and um, uh, good improving trends um, around the world. We also have numbers from BHP Billiton. It's fair to say the mining sector has probably been one of the surprising features of 2014, starting in sort of fine style and uh, really building on gains from last week, which we saw Rio Tinto producing some top end of the range forecasts. Um, and as a result of that, some confidence is building that the mining sector may well have um, bottomed. On Thursday, we have um, Centrica. This stock has been bashed quite hard since Ed Miliband's speech at the end of September, dropping from £4 a share down to closer to £3 and uh, signs of, um, uh, well, whether they can comment upon uh, the government noises that have been taking place and indeed the recent um, survey that was complaining that the margins at their subsidiary British Gas um, are running much higher than the sector specialists. So any comments on that? It's become quite a political hot potato, that stock of late. So talk, um, um, talking about uh, some further charts on currencies, because I think sterling was quite a feature last week. Here we have the uh, pound versus the US dollar. Um, and as we can see, it's now hitting highs last seen in 2011. And indeed, it won't take a lot to nudge us through to multi-year highs on sterling. Um, Really, the, the thinking which I articulated last week coming out from some of the banks um, is that uh, interest rates in the UK will rise faster or earlier here than um, in uh, any other of the sort of G10 economies. Um, whether that is the case or not, well, time will tell, but um, UBS, for example, were bringing forward their forecast date from Q3 to Q1 in 2015 for rates rising. It's a combination of this, the unemployment data, property prices, um, which is all starting to, to yield to uh, investors thinking that rates are going to start moving higher and giving sterling quite a boost. Whether sterling can get make its way through the sort of upcoming coming sort of European elections, the Scottish referendum and indeed the election which is due in 2015 um, with Ed Miliband and the Labour Party ahead in the polls at the moment. Again, only time will tell, but certainly as we enter into, um, into this sort of um, the coming weeks, um, sterling is proving to be the strongest currency out of the major bloc. Um, it also is strong against the euro. Um, it's now sort of bursting through the top end of that range of around 120. 
two um, on the chart. Now one sector we took a look at last week and moved to a sell is the tobacco stocks um, and uh, really a combination of reasons why we feel that the headwinds against uh, tobacco stocks um, may make the next 20 years tougher than the last 20 years. Um, going back over that period of time, tobacco stocks have benefited um, from the fact that interest rates have moved sharply lower, and as a result of that, the free cash flow yield and growing dividends, and indeed the benefits of emerging market growth, has really driven uh, tobacco stocks to be in one of the best performing stocks uh, sectors over the last 20 years. But really, a number of things working against it at the moment, um, meaning that the premium rating um, which used to exist is, um, uh, sorry, the, uh, the risk rating which used to exist is no longer there and we actually start to see that the uh, moving average on the tobacco stocks are moving lower and headwinds against it. So we're moving towards a sell um, on the tobacco stocks, BAT and Imperial Tobacco being the sort of major ones. Imperial Tobacco indeed last week reported results. Um, Stabilisation in Europe has been uh, the, the reason why the, the stock has rebounded from the lows um, but volumes in Europe are definitely on the decline um, down by around 5% and that follows recent negative comments from Philip Morris in Europe. Um, in terms of um, other, other um, sort of key features, um, Rolls-Royce was hit quite hard last week. Um, the company is guiding lower for 2014 on their earnings numbers. Um, downgrades that we've seen this, this time round are around 10% to forecast expectations. Um, what we do find with this market at the moment, and it's certainly true of Tate and Lowell last week, that uh, if there is room for disappointment on the earnings numbers, then share prices are being hit quite hard. Um, I think it is a reflection of the fact that price earnings multiples moved out during 2013 to, to uh, higher levels and therefore pr providing less room for disappointment in underlying stories. So the Rolls-Royce one was a surprise, um, but it follows on from other companies that seem to be slightly resetting expectations for 2014. One hopes that uh, they've done enough to bottom out forecasts and can move forward from here. The stock did hit £10 but seems to be rallying off the, off the back of um, that, um, that number. Just to finally to turn to the FTSE 100, um, we've been in sort of quite a wide range for 2014 already, opening um, stylishly to begin with with a few percent gain, um, falling quite quickly on these emerging market worries which impacted as we know on the Turkish lira, interest rates, South, South Africa as well. Um, but that seems to have been largely overcome and we've now rallied at least half of those sort of falls that were experienced in 2014 and uh, a bit of blue and screen on Monday morning suggests that, um, that we, we may well have um, got past the worst of that um, particular crisis um, for markets.